Hi, welcome back to Miss Bell's classroom. In today's lesson, we'll, we will be relaxing and learning about five interesting animals from South America. So, I'll be continuing my animal series. So, remember, if you don't want to miss any lessons, be sure to enroll in my class by clicking the subscribe button. So, the first animal that we're going to cover is a piranha. Raise your hand if you've heard of a piranha. Okay, so most of us have. Good. So, this is a picture of a piranha, and they are a South American fish with razor sharp teeth and a reputation for feeding frenzies. They're pretty aggressive fish. So, um, the most commonly known species is the red bellied piranha. Most piranhas don't get any bigger than two feet long. Piranhas live in South America in rivers and lakes, and 20 different species are found in the Amazon River. Piranhas live in groups called a shoal. When threatened, the shoal will group together with other shoals to take down the predator. Most piranhas get a bad rap as terrifying predators that will tear to shreds any flesh that dares dip into its waters, but that's actually not true. Some Piranhas are omnivorous and eat more seeds than meat, and some species are actually vegetarian. Other species eat shrimp, worms, carrion, and other fish, and attacks on humans are very rare, so you don't need to be afraid of piranhas. The red-bellied piranha is considered one of the most dangerous or the more dangerous and aggressive species of the piranha. Generally, when red-bellied piranhas are feeding normally, the fish will spread out and a scowl will signal when a food source is found. When alerted, piranhas are very orderly. Some of the fish will take a bite and then move aside so another fish can take a bite. Just one red-bellied piranha can eat around one-eighth of its body mass per day. And female piranhas lay thousands of eggs at a time in the sand below the water source where they live. The red-bellied piranha female, for example, lays her eggs in a nest that is dug by her mate. After the male fertilizes the eggs, they attach to plants at the bottom of the water source and hatch within just a few days. Piranhas live up to eight years. Red-bellied piranhas bark to warn predators to leave them alone. The piranhas' top and bottom teeth work together like scissors to cut up food. They lose and regrow teeth, much like sharks. Piranhas have very strong jaws for clamping down on prey. And the black piranha has the strongest bite force recorded for bony fish. So that's probably where they get their bad reputation of being these fierce animals that will eat anything. Um, any questions about piranhas? Okay, so go ahead and take some notes. I hope that you learned a little bit. Okay, so the next animal is the anaconda. So here is anaconda. And raise your hand if you like snakes. Some of us do raise your hand if you don't like snakes. Yes, I don't like snakes either. But we will go ahead and talk about this animal. Pretty creepy. So, anacondas are semi aquatic snakes found in tropical South America. They are some of the largest snakes in the world and are known for their swimming ability. And there are four recognized species of anaconda. So there is the green anaconda, the yellow or Paraguayan anaconda, the dark spotted anaconda, and the Benny or Bolivarian anaconda. And I apologize if I said those wrong. Um, the green 
Anaconda is the heaviest snake in the world and one of the longest. So anacondas are stocky, muscular snakes that are thicker than other boas. They have thick necks and narrow but large heads, which allow them to see above the water while remaining mostly submerged. Anacondas coloring and size depends on the species. Green anacondas length is still a matter of debate. They are quite difficult to measure and it is hard to stretch out a captive anaconda, not to mention potentially dangerous for the snake. So people who see anacondas in the wild are likely to overestimate their length due to fear. Also an anaconda that has recently eaten will look much larger than one that hasn't, causing exaggerated estimations of size. But the average size of female anacondas is around 15 feet and the average size of males are around nine feet. And weights are also not known for sure, but the average is probably somewhere around 100 to 150 pounds. So all anacondas live in South America, east of the Andes. Anacondas live in tropical rivers and swamps, either in the rainforest or grasslands. They thrive in the heat humidity and dense foliage of the rainforest. They spend most of their time swimming or lurking in murky sluggish rivers and slow moving streams. They sun themselves on branches hanging over water, which they can easily drop into if needed. Anacondas are the most active in the early evening and at night. Their large size makes them cumbersome on land, but they can move swiftly in the water. So anacondas, like boas, are non-venomous, they're not poisonous. They hunt for a variety of prey items, typically under the cover of darkness. Anacondas usually lurk in rivers near banks, where the murky waters and their camouflaging color conceals them, waiting for prey to come to drink. Then they attack. They restrain their prey with their sharp, curved teeth and apply their constrictive killing technique. So there are some misconceptions about how that constrictioning works. One is that it crushes or breaks the bones of the prey. Another is that the snake suffocates it, squeezing the prey's lungs to tightly not work. It turns out that the squeezing overwhelms the circulatory system blood cannot get to the brain and then the animal dies. Since anacondas typically constrict their prey in the water, drowning is also a common cause of death. So anacondas eat a variety of animals. Small snakes may take rodents, lizards, and fish, while adult snakes may take caiman, capybara, or even jaguars. Female anacondas sometimes even eat males. So once the prey is dead, anacondas swallow it whole, and green anacondas are apex predators, meaning that they are at the top of their food chain. So sometimes, however, going after large animals like jaguars and caiman can result in serious injuries or death. After feeding, anacondas can go weeks or months without eating again. During the spring, Females leave a scent trail or emit an airborne chemical to attract males. While females stay in more or less the same location during mating season, males travel great distances to find females. Males have been observed sticking out their tongues to pick up female scents. Anacondas form breeding balls, giant snake swarms in which 2 to 12 males coil around one female and slowly wrestle for the chance to mate with her. Breeding balls can last as long as four weeks. After mating, females carry their embryos inside their bodies while they gestate for seven months. During this time, females do not feed, possibly because hunting carries the risk of injury, which could harm the babies and females typically have around 29 babies. That's a lot. In captivity, they can live up 
to 30 years, but in the wild they live for about 10 years. So, do you think anacondas can eat humans? Okay, so some of us do. So, anacondas have a legendary status as man-eaters. The scientific consensus is, however, that an anaconda could eat a human. They eat prey that is tougher and stronger than humans. So that is all I have about the anaconda. So any questions? Okay, raise your hand if you enjoyed learning about the anacondas. Okay, I know I'm ready to move on. So the next animal that we're going to talk about is the capybara. Has anyone seen one of these before? I haven't? Okay, so Capybaras are the world's largest rodent. You can see their rodent features there. And capybaras are as big as large dogs. They have webbed feet and don't have a tail. They look like larger guinea pigs, which you may even have as a pet. And capybaras are from about 39 to 51 inches long and 20 inches tall from foot to shoulder. They tend to weigh 60 to 174 pounds depending on gender. Females are usually a little larger than males. These water-loving rodents need water to keep their dry skin moist and are only found in areas with abundant water sources. Capybaras are also water hogs sleep along the water source in dense vegetation to hide from predators and to keep cool. Sometimes capybaras will nap in mud or shallow water as well. Capybaras are very social creatures. A typical group of capybaras contains around 10 members. During the wet season though, a group can contain around 40 members and up to 100 members during the dry season, all led by a dominant male. Capybaras are herbivores and only eat vegetation. They eat mostly water plants and grasses, though grain, melons, and squash can also be on their menu. But 80% of their diet consists of only five different species of grasses. And a typical day of eating can include six to eight pounds of fresh grass. It's a lot of grass. Gestation for a female capybara can last up to 120 days. She typically gives birth to around three pups at once, but can have anywhere between one to seven offspring at a time. Pups weigh two to three pounds at birth and already have teeth. At 18 weeks, pups are as big as 88 pounds. And around a year old, pups leave their parents' groups to find new ones. Females sexually mature around the age of 7 to 12 months, and males mature around 15 to 24 months. Capybaras typically live 6 to 12 years, and capybaras stay underwater for up to, they can stay up to underwater for up to 5 minutes at a time. And the scientific name for capybara comes from hydroshyris, which means water hog in Greek. Any questions about the capybara? Okay, so I'm going to show you the next animal that we're going to talk about. And you've probably seen this before. It's becoming a pretty popular animal. So raise your hand if you've seen this animal before. So most of us have. What is this animal called? Yes. Yes, it is a sloth. I might tell you some interesting information about sloths today. So, sloths are tropical mammals that live in Central and South America. They use their long claws to hang onto branches while they feast on the leaves that other animals can't reach. You can see, look at their very, very long claws. So that helps them grab food. 
that other animals cannot reach. Um, this last long claws, three to four inches, make walking on the ground difficult. So they spend most of their time in tall trees they call home. Thousands of years ago, sloths were much larger. Ancient sloths could grow to be as large as an elephant. They roamed North America and became extinct around 10,000 years ago. Sloths have an average lifespan of 20 to 30 years in the wild, but captive sloths tend to live a bit longer. So compared with most mammals, sloths move very slowly, which is kind of something that you've heard about their reputation, probably. It takes them about a minute to climb only six to eight feet. And sloths may be slow climbers, but they are actually speedy swimmers. So they're naturally buoyant, and like humans, sloths can do the breaststroke with ease. Because sloths inhabit rainforests prone to seasonal flooding, the ability to swim is essential for their survival. Sloths are solitary creatures that rarely interact with one another outside of breeding season. And sloths typically sleep for 15 to 20 hours per day. They prefer to sleep while curled into a ball in the fork of a tropical tree. They also like to sleep by hanging their claws from tree branches. Though their ancestors lived in North America, modern sloths live in Central and South America, enjoying the tall trees found in the rain clouds and mangrove forests. So for the most part, a sloth's life revolves around sleeping and eating in its tree homes. These mammals come down from treetops only to go to the bathroom, which they do once a week, search for a mate, or to establish new territory. So let's last meet and give birth in trees. Courting starts when a female yells a shrill, monotone mating scream to let the males in the area know she is ready. All female sloths have only one baby at a time, after they are born, the babies aren't in a hurry to leave their mother. Little sloths stay by their mother's side for two to four years. Two-toed sloths are omnivorous, meaning they can consume plants and animals. Their diet includes fruits, leaves, insects, and small lizards. Three-toed sloths, on the other hand, are most likely to be entirely herbivorous plant eaters. Their diet consists primarily of leaves and buds from selected species of tree, including the leafy Ciceropia tree. Sloths digest food even more slowly than they eat it. Their leafy diet isn't very nutritious, so they don't get much energy from it, which, is, which could be the reason for their sluggish lifestyle. Sloths are considered the world's slowest animal. They creep at such a slow pace that algae actually grows on their fur. All mammals from humans to giraffes have seven vertebrae in their necks, except for sloths and manatees. Two-toed sloth species have five and seven, between five and seven neck vertebrae, while three-toed sloths have eight or nine vertebrae. Having a few extra neck vertebrae allows three-toed sloths to rotate their heads up to 270 degrees. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next animal, but before we do that, we're going to have our snack break. This will be our last animal that we talk about for South American animals. Um, as you're eating your snack, think about what animal you think it might be. Okay, so I'm going to show you the picture of the animal that we're going to talk about next. If you know what it is, raise your hand. Okay, what animal is this? Yes, yes it is the jaguar. Who is ready to learn about the jaguar today? Awesome. So 
jaguars are very large cats that can be found in North, Central, and South America. They are identified by their yellow or orange coats, dark spots, and short legs. So you can see their yellowish oranges coats. They have dark spots on them, and their legs are pretty short compared to the rest of their body. Um, and the dark spots on their coat here, very, very pretty, but they're unlike any other cat spots. Jaguars are the biggest cats in the Americas and the third largest cats in the world. From head to flank, these cats range from four to six feet. And the tail can add another two feet in length, though their tails are quite short when compared to other large cats. They tend to stay close to water and they like to fish. Jaguars will dip their tails into the water to lure fish, much like a fishing line. Jaguars are loners that only spend time with others of their kind when they are mating or taking care of cubs. To keep other jaguars at bay, they mark their territory with urine or by marking trees with their claws. Their territories can be up to 50 miles wide, and the jaguar is a top-level predator. It doesn't have any natural predators other than humans who hunt them for their fur or sport. Their name comes from the Native American word Yajor. Yajor means he who kills with one leap. So during the hunt, jaguars take advantage of their strong jaws and sharp teeth. They catch their prey by the head and chop down to make the kill. Other cats go for the neck when killing prey. Jaguars are carnivores, which means that they only eat meat. In the wild, jaguars will use their speed and stealth to take down deer, picari, monkeys, birds, frogs, fish, alligators, and small rodents. If wild food is scarce, these large cats will also hunt domestic livestock. Their jaws are stronger than any other species of cat. With these strong jaws, jaguars will crunch down on bones and eat them. Their jaws are strong enough to crack a sea turtle's shell. Jaguars will only eat their prey after dragging into the trees, even if the trees are quite a distance away. In August and September, jaguars mate. After mating, the female will only carry her young for around 100 days and will give birth to one to four young. Baby jaguars are called cubs. They are born with their eyelids sealed shut. After about two weeks, the cubs are able to see for the first time. After six months, the cub's mother will teach them how to hunt. And after their second birthday, the cub will leave their mother to live on their own. Jaguars typically live around 12 years. All black jaguars occur due to a genetic mutation. So this mutation causes the skin and fur to contain larger amounts of dark mutation. Um, this mutation causes the skin and fur to contain larger amounts of dark pigment. These types of jaguars are found in rainforests because it is easier for them to blend into the dark shadows of trees. Jaguars can see six times better than humans at night or during darker conditions due to a layer of tissue in the back of the eye that reflects light. Unlike most cats, jaguars are not afraid of the water. They are also very good swimmers. So after learning about these five animals, raise your hand if you would want to live in South America couple brave people. I know I wouldn't. These animals are pretty, some of them seem pretty fierce. Um, but I hope that you enjoyed today and you continue to learn about animals or you got a refresher about them or it was interesting to you. Um, if you enjoyed this, please enroll in my class. Good night.